so we've got this big box of posters here and what is inside is all right well it is a beautiful saturday morning the sun is shining on us hopefully that is a good omen as you can see we are out of the countryside and back into the burbs this is one of my favorite areas to source in i typically find very good collectibles here so we just have to find our house which i think is coming up here on the right somewhere let's take a look i think it's this one right over here yes this one with the flag on it that is the house so let's get parked it's a one level and uh, i'm already uh signed up so hopefully we'll get in on the first wave so I was hoping that the sunshine rays were a good omen, but uh, I didn't tell you that uh, my number on the list is number 13. So hopefully that's not a bad omen. Uh, let's see what happens when we get inside. The door is opening. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. I'm gonna head straight in. I'm gonna come back out here later. Uh, there's something I'm looking for from the pictures. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see where it is. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Right, this is what I was looking for, which is the Intellivision system. I had the Intellivision when I was a kid, but you can see here it's $200. came out in 1979. There's 20 or so games here, 19 or 20 games. This is the best one, but it comes all as a package. Um, if the Intellivision works, which I don't know, you could get about... 9500 bucks out of it if it doesn't work um, you're gonna get maybe about 50 bucks for parts but it's an unknown if it works for the video games if you had like 23 to 25 of them you could maybe get 150 at best so right now is not the best time for me to buy this uh, so that's what happens when you come on the first day uh, sometimes. So we're going to leave this here. But um, if you see these around, Miss Primetime found one once uh, at like a flea market or something or a garage sale or a rummage sale for two bucks. Uh, we did really well. Plus there were games and stuff. So, yeah, just keep it in mind if you see it. And uh, this is a set uh, that I go for uh, sometimes. Uh, you can see we've got the Pyrex bowls, but right now um, they're nesting bowls, different colors. They're in uh, good condition, but they're at a hundred bucks right now, so I'm uh, going to keep it here. But this is something that I look for as well, and you've seen me pick up. All right, so back out into the garage. I love wood signs. This one's really cool. A please remove shoes. Uh, and to get this, we just have to remove the screw. But fortunately, I could actually do that with my finger. So but we're gonna grab that for 10. All right, got it just in time too, because someone was just about to grab it. So first double tap of the day. All right, so again, just for reference, that's the garage we came in. And these are uh, some of the hats. Uh, so I like to go after uh, military type hats. Now it does depend on the type of hat. Uh, this one here I really like because not only does it have uh, the name of the ship, USS Minneapolis St. Paul SSN 708. Um, now obviously this is going to need to be cleaned up. It's filled with cobwebs and it's been hanging on that nail for quite a while. But it also has the imagery on it. Uh, so with the fish on it, that really helps. Uh, you got the water, the ship image too. So that's really cool. Uh, so we're going to add this one in here. Light, easy to ship. And then this one here, see it doesn't have any imagery on it. And so um, it, it's more of a generic hat. Um, it, this would sell for around like 14 bucks. I'm going to leave it here for the, for the five. So um, happy with this one. Uh, some of the hats are pretty faded and pretty generic and there's nothing about them 
uh, at least some of them that jump out to me to pick up. The Price Chopper one is kind of funny, but uh, kind of bland. I don't know, maybe someone would pick this up. Let's see, um, any Price Chopper fans in the house, they do have Price Chopper near us. Um, you know, it does have the netting on the back. It's a snapback. It's kind of cool. Um, I don't know uh, what the price is on it. It might only be like a buck or something. So, yeah, I think it's worth picking up for that. So, uh, we'll, we'll put it in there. Price Chopper fans. If you're a Price Chopper fan, <laughs> let me know. All right, uh, what else do we got here? Minute Maid Juices. That doesn't jump out. Rainbow International. Uh, no. Bud Light, Camo. Not really. Some of these are regional, like Upstate Farms. Dairy Foods, Crowley. Here's a Wendy Mail one. Uh, no. So, Mayola makes dairy products, and some people like their advertising. Whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. There's like, there's like a, there's like a house in here from like insects that built a nest in here. Look at this. Something built a nest inside the hat. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good omen or a bad omen. So, um, we'll see. Let's see if we can knock that out of there. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's really, that's really something. Uh, it's definitely vintage. It's a little faded. Uh, we'll clean that out. Um, yeah, I think we're going to pick it up because some people do like uh, Mayola Dairy and will pay up for the advertising. You don't normally see the hat. I like that it has this rope around it. So, uh, we'll add this to our, to our hat rock. Awesome. All right, now one of my thoughts with this one was that even though someone's probably not going to buy this because of the company, I think that someone would buy this for like pride reasons, you know, since it has the rainbow on it. So um, I'm going to pick it up for that reason. Plus it has the, um, you know, the netting on the back, which I like. So another cool snapback. So we'll, we'll add this one in here as well. All right, well, this is where my height comes in to advantage because most people are not going to be able to grab this. And, you know, looking at it again, I'm thinking, you know, people do like this trucker style with the hat. It's very popular. It doesn't have a price on it, so it's probably, you know, just a couple bucks or so. And it does have a nice bright yellow car on it, Buick Super. So I think someone's going to like this. As usual, if you see something you like and you're interested in, just message me, uh, primetime treasure, no S at the end, at gmail.com. Or, you know, say something in the comments. Sometimes I pick up NYPD hats. Uh, this one is from the Deputies Association. This is about a $15 hat. I'm going to pass on it for five. Uh, this one's a little too high at 10, but you know, if you get it for a little lower, sometimes. Uh, NYPD stuff is good to pick up. Uh, Mickey Mouse hat is cool, but as you can see, it's uh, pretty dirty. Three bucks. Uh, it is about like a $10 hat, so we're going to leave this one here too. All right, so here are some other hats. Uh, some of them are, you know, pretty generic and touristy uh, hats from the Caribbean. Uh, this one has some cool 80s colors, but I'm going to pass just because, again, it's pretty generic and um, touristy but this one here you know this is a yeah, good yeah, example of how you have to look below because it's on the bottom peg at least for me and you can't see what is the most interesting element of this until you get down below and look up and you've got Sam the Eagle very cool Los Angeles Olympics 1984 hat trucker style snapback you don't come across something like this often if Chris Cernock is watching this he's probably gonna love this one and we're definitely gonna pick this one up for the 10 bucks and then this one here it's really the word people love this word for different reasons uh, without me going into it, so you could probably uh, figure it out, it has multiple taboo types of meanings, uh, and people will just, you know, like to wear this for that reason, so for three bucks, I think this is uh, a good pickup as well. So, uh, we are loading up on the hats. All right, so there's some more hats here. Um, you know, some of them look tempting, but, you know, you gotta know the comps on some of this stuff. So like, for example, this ACGM Delco one, which is priced at 10, that's actually about retail for it. So 
Uh, not all trucker hats, mesh hats, um, netting hats, snapback hats are you know, worth picking up for the stated price. It really just does depend. That's an Olympic hat up top, which looks like it has some kind of pin on it as well. Um, problem is the hat's kind of faded and it doesn't really have cool graphics on it. So I'm gonna leave it there. A lot of these other ones are like, you know, Cellular One or you know, Domino's Pizza or you know, General Motors. There's just nothing real fancy that's jumping out to me. Uh, with them and the chevy patch one is kind of cool but um yeah i'm gonna leave these here we'll pick this one up that was another cellular one one so all right for me all right so moving on from there there are some hats down here uh, of these uh we're definitely gonna pass on the dockers but uh edge cool metals definitely a cool one uh this one would be about a 20 to 25 dollar hat so we'll Pick that one up as well, I like the blue color. And uh, it's also in great shape too, so not as beat up as some of the other ones. All right, so on the other side, we have this really cool uh, vintage fisherman hat, which has these cool items used for fishing uh, adorned onto it. So I think this is really neat uh, for five bucks. Uh, I think someone's gonna really like this. So uh, we're gonna pick this up, what's it say? If this hat's missing, I've gone fishing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like how it has graphics on the top. All right, so moving on from where that hat was, uh, check this out. This is how no, items get passed up a lot because what you've got here is something behind a door. And a lot of times this presents a barrier for people so they won't just do something as simple as this because it looks like something's in the way, but it's not that, not that hard to move it. Uh, plus it's stapled up, but a fisherman is gonna love this for just $5. Look at all these graphics on it made in Canada, all we have to do is pop these staples out. Now I don't want to pull it because that's going to rip it. So I have to get like, you know, some pliers or something here and just uh, pry out the staples. Um, but for, for five bucks, it's totally worth doing that. So uh, let's grab some uh, pliers here and uh, we'll pop that right off. So I actually just went with the chisel. That's the easiest way to do this that I found just go right underneath it and it just pops out super easy so sometimes the tools you need are just right next to you i have a bag of tools that i use uh, in case this stuff isn't around but sometimes this is just simpler all right there we go those are all oh what's going on here is this odors oh, they're also in here as well he put them in multiple places i thought i got them all out by popping the ones out of the corner but there's a few more in here All right, as you can see, it's off the wall into my box. Uh, just do a little bit of work. It's totally worth it. Uh, speaking of a little bit of work, I see this uh, vintage ashtray here. Uh, this is going to look really nice cleaned up. You just have to look past, you know, the uh, ash marks and stuff. This will clean up really nice. So uh, we're going to pick this up. So a good way to get things for cheap is, again, just, uh, you know, being willing to put a little bit of extra work into it. All right, well, look at this. Would you believe that this is the same ashtray you just saw? So I soaked it overnight and just used some... Um, soap and water and then you know next day just wiped it off with a toothbrush soft bristle and a um, paper towel came out really nicely there was some residual uh, soot on there so I used a little bit more soap also uh, some toothpaste can do wonders and then for anything that was left after that like sometimes you'll get like a little cloudy film on the bottom that won't come off with those things the way to get that out is you just put some table salt on it like that and mix it in with a little bit of lemon juice. You could use this or from a real lemon and then just, you know, wipe it off with a paper towel. And um, this is how it comes out. No scratches, nothing like that. This is awesome. And I'm real happy to bring this one back to life. All right, tools are just a buck. Uh, do I look for tools? Yes, you'll see me pick them up every once in a while. Like recently, you saw me pick up that miter gauge at a recent sale. Uh, but here, uh, I don't see anything I want, but these are definitely useful for picking things off walls. 
All right, now if you were wondering what some of these other hats were, um, 40, twice as good as 20, uh, not really that funny. Uh, Strike Force hat, I was Strike Force hat. Eh, probably like a $10, $15 hat. Uh, Johnson Outboards, not gonna be able to do anything with that. Um, this one though has a funny saying on it. It's not how deep you fish, it's how you wiggle your worm. Uh, do you agree with that? Let me know in the comments. Uh, but for three bucks, this, oh no, five bucks, sorry. Uh, still a good pickup because this, I think I could get like 25 to 30 out of this. Again, I gotta clean it off and stuff, but I think this is a good one. Now it's interesting, as I touch this hat, let me see if you could hear this. Hear that? The snap, crackle, pop. It dried out inside. Now, sometimes people really want this front brim to be stiff, no pun intended with the hat here, but um, it's, uh, it, you just have to disclose that, I think. Um, it, it's still definitely a wearable hat, so it's just a little flimsier on the front. So, I mean, I guess someone technically could open it up and replace it if they wanted to, but I actually think it's gonna be more comfortable this way. So, speaking of wiggling the worm. You got a price on the clock? My house. She used to have $400. <laughs> so that thing keeps perfect time. So yeah. I don't like your clock in the 60s. Yep. 10 bucks. It's a little rough. Sold. Yeah. So yeah, again, just gotta be willing to reach up and do a little bit of work because it is wired behind here and goes right up into that plug there, but that's that's easy to take out. It's not stapled in or anything. I just pull it out. All right, I'm dedicating the pick of this clock to Lina because uh, she really loves clocks. So hopefully she likes this one too. Nice and vintage. Uh, you could see you got the vintage plug on here. Um, the back, the model is 2008A and probably around like a $50 clock or so, I'd say. So good to uh, pick this one up at uh, 10. So we'll see what we could do with it. All right, so that's where the clock was. That's the mark of the primetime treasure hunter that shows that I've been here. And speaking of tools, uh, we are gonna pick this one up, this uh, Sears hydraulic jack. Really cool, it's a four ton jack, so always look at the metric on that because sometimes you'll come across like a 12 ton jack or something, but this be like a $50 jack. So we're gonna pick this one up for the five. Definitely a neat one and the heaviest thing we've picked up today. All right, so another thing I want to show you with regards to restoration has to do with dealing with a bunch of rust. And as you could see, on the bottom of this jack, we do have some unsightly rust that I really would like to get off because it would improve the sellability of the item. So what we're going to do is use a product that I really love to help get this rust off. Now, this is not any kind of paid ad or anything like this. It's a product that I genuinely like and enjoy using. It's called Evapo Rust, non-toxic, biodegradable, safe on the skin and eyes. So we're gonna take this piece off because it's gonna make it easier for us to do this. And, you know, just depending on the size of the uh, item that you're dealing with, you have to find an appropriate container. This is just an old um, vinegar uh, container. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put this inside and then I am just going to pour the evapo rust into it just to cover the part on the bottom that I need to. We could deal with this later, um, but I'm going to deal with the, the bottom part for now. Okay, so as you can see, it is all covered on the bottom. You let it sit for about 12 hours and then later come by and, uh, you know, you just gently rub off the rust and I'll show you uh, what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, it is 12 hours later and the liquid on the bottom has turned pretty dark. I'm just going to take off this uh, paper towel and uh, you can see as I take this out that it has taken a lot of that rust off. So I'm going to rinse it off and uh, just gently brush a little bit with the 
toothbrush here and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here you can see the bottom. Look at the dramatic difference. Now that is not rust, by the way. That is just, you know, some wearing away of the paint. I mean, there's a few speckles of, you know, rust left. Uh, but overall, I mean, what a dramatic improvement compared to what it used to look like. Now, stuff like this, I mean, you could spot clean afterwards if you want. But, you know, it really got a lot of uh, that rust off. And that was my point, really, is to try to just make it look much less unsightly than it did. Uh, the top could definitely use some more work. So it uh, looks like, um, you know, some came off putting the paper towel over it. But I'm going to actually uh, flip it uh, over and uh, I'm going to immerse it uh, in this just to get, you know, some more uh, off on the top because I do think that would make it look a little better. All right, it's been 12 hours, so let's take this out and <laughs> oh, look at that. Just took the rust right off of that. I mean, I don't even have to rinse it or anything. I mean, it just literally stripped it right off. So this really gives you a big competitive advantage when you're sourcing because if you have the knowledge that you could get that rust off and everyone's passing it up, plus you get a cheaper price on it typically because it has that rust on it, this is a really good strategic approach to use. Again, that's it right there, Vapo Rust. I'll have a link to it in the description section under uh, Rust Remover. Uh, as with any of the links in the Amazon section of my description section, I do get a small commission if you wind up purchasing through the link. So if you do that, thank you for supporting the channel. And if you use this product, let me know how it works for you. All right, we have a receiver here by Sound Design. Not sure the price though. What's the price on the receiver? 10 bucks. 10 bucks? All right, let's see. Oh, it does light up so that's a good sign also it looks real heavy but it's actually fairly light um so and, and it also looks like it's much deeper in than it is you can see it's actually a nice rectangular shape so this is actually pretty easy to ship so i think uh vinyl who watches is going to be really happy that i picked up this uh, uh receiver he's probably watching this during the premiere so uh give me a, a double tap in the chat uh <laughs> vinyl we're gonna get this for 10. All right, now I have picked up big trains before, but this would definitely be the biggest one. This is the mighty Casey, as you can see here. Now this came out in the 1970s. It was designed to be a ride-on train for little kids. Um, the problem is that you can see we have damage to the seat. That's all broken off and also here. Plus it doesn't really pull well with the wheels. It does have the track, which you could sell separately, but this comes with the track. So it's a package deal for 30. Um, you know, if it wasn't uh, broken and stuff, um, you know, you could do well with flipping this. Uh, you get well over $100 for it. This would need to be cleaned up and stuff, but I'm going to pass up on it just because of the bulk combined with the damage on it. If it wasn't broken, uh, I definitely would have picked this up. But, um, you know, for something like this, collectors really going to want to, you know, display this and, um, uh, you know, for, with, with the damage to that, it's going to be too much of an eyesore. So I'm going to leave it here, but definitely something to look for if you come across it. You... Prime time. If you want something else to look at, why don't you look in this box? Oh no. Here we go again. What do we have here? Why don't you come over on the other side? Yeah, I, I see Playgirl there, so I'm definitely not going on that side. Let's uh let's go over here. See what we've got in the magazine box. Oh boy, Playboy. You know, you're going to come across a lot of Playboys actually when you're outsourcing. There are some specific issues that could do well, some that are sealed. <laughs> but uh, this type of stuff down here, I'm going to pass on this. He, he looks very excited right there um, because it, eBay is going to take this down in two seconds. So, uh, and I don't need any more trouble with them with these types of books. 
Yeah, I can't even show you the cover of this one, so we're gonna <laughs> close this one up and uh, be on our way from this box. Oh boy. All right, so from the magazine box to these two boxes of trains, this deal really jumps out to me. Look at this, two boxes of train stuff for $40, and you've got all vintage stuff in here. Look at this, you've got the uh, remote control uh, switches. Uh, so let's just open this up and take a peek in, in here. Look at this, look at the vintageness of these switch trucks. Very cool. That's nice. I mean, and it would be great if they work, but you don't even have to know if they work because you could just sell them for parts uh, or repair. Uh, look at this. We've got the uh, Trainmaster toy transformer. That's a cool piece. With the railroad crossing sign there. That's neat. We've got the Lionel Lines coal tenders. Now you gotta be careful with the Lionel because um, sometimes they're just plastic pieces like this one and it might only be like a 10 to $15 uh, piece, but one like this is really heavy. And so even if this one doesn't work, the 2026, like for parts, you could sell this one for like 60 bucks. Not only that, but if you look down here, I mean, we are loaded with vintage track. And so I've done well selling this track before. I just um, line it up according to whether it's uh, straight and curved uh, or curved. And then I just stack it up and I you know, sell it in a, a big lot of vintage track. So, wow, this is really neat. I'm going to jump all over this for $40. Great deal. I'm just going through here a little bit more just in case you're a train fan and want to see what else we have we got these flatbed pieces sometimes you'll have this where you have the bottom and not the top but sometimes there's a collector looking for the bottom because their bottom broke and not the top or sometimes people are looking for the shell they don't might not have the you know the wheels on the bottom like you know that might be an example they might just have the shell for sale and not the, the bottom really. just to show you i mean look at look at all the track so yeah we're going to put this by the table where the state sale dealers are are hanging out and um, we'll, uh, we'll let them hold on to it. And there you can see the marking that it's Lionel. Cause sometimes you have to be careful that sometimes you might have a box of Lionel trains up top, but not Lionel track on the bottom, but this is all Lionel. So I just wanted to give you an update as I've been digging through this box, uh, found lots of goodies inside. Now I've used gloves to dig down there because as you could see, it's uh, pretty ratty down there. Unfortunately, I did not find a rat, but it's worth digging. Found some great stuff. Uh, here is the Lionel uh, 155 ringing signal. And actually there's paperwork uh, to it as well. And I found some other great paperwork for other pieces. Sometimes people would just buy the paperwork if it's uh, intact and nice and this stuff's often double-sided. Here you can see all the straight track and this is pulled out and all the curved track is over here. Uh, this is a uh, crossing guard and ringing signal by Marks. Uh, that's pretty cool. This is a remote control Lionel switch. There's some of the trains. There's some switching track uh, in the back. See, I've bagged this stuff and separated it. You can see there's some accessories that go with the trains, which is pretty cool. And uh, my favorite thing though is actually not this stuff. And I have more stuff in other boxes, some of which I'm uh, listing right now and I have in other areas. But my favorite thing actually was, was not this. It was uh, the little pieces I was digging out on the bottom, like things like this. These little accessories are so cool. Uh, even something like this little bottle, like someone would buy something like that. A collector would like that. The Lionel Smoke pellets, they could display it, put stuff in it themselves. Don't throw this stuff out. Save it. Uh, this is pretty cool. The uh, Tungzel uh, miniature lamps. Look at that. You know, I don't know if they work, but someone will buy them and just sell them uh, as is. Someone would like it just for the advertising. I found this little daisy caster wheel inside, so that would be cool for someone. You know, one is a replacement. I like the little shower head, all the different um, animals, like the pigs and the horses, the different colors, definitely cool. And um, 
you know, I was looking at these two pieces and then, you know, I was looking at the remaining things I had in here and I saw this and I was like, you know, this probably goes with that. So I, you know, put this over here and then I grabbed this and I said, well, I wonder if it would slot inside and voila, it fits right there. And then this piece over here uh, would go in there as well. So now you can see we have a nice little station set up. That's really cool. That's gonna be a good uh, selling point uh, that I have all that. So, you know, dig through the boxes, like I said, get some gloves on um, so you don't get sick or anything. But, uh, you know, these little goodies um, like this are often buried on the bottom. I always say you gotta dig for the treasures. Don't worry if it looks a little funky and gross. My favorite thing is we save these things and um, they are going to go into a new home with someone who's going to display them and enjoy them, especially um, the black animals because they were camouflaged on the bottom of the box with it being so dark. So um, this is one of the really fun things about uh, reselling that I absolutely love is rescuing vintage pieces like this. Ah, look at that. We got another piece hiding right here. Very, very cool. Love this vintage plastic. One other tip is that I really like to process the stuff in these boxes as soon as I can. Not necessarily the day that I get back from the estate sale, although I'll do some of it then, but throughout the week I process things in units like you could see here. So no longer do I have to look at this gross box and think of all the stuff that's in there and disorganized. Now I know you know, I have a bunch of it organized in this box. There's all the track down below, some of the trains. And this is going to significantly increase the chance that you're going to list the stuff once you know you have it organized. And, um, you know, it's, it's visible. You know, you know where everything is. And it's just nicer, you know, when you have it out, you know, in a box like this compared to, uh, to that. And so there's stuff that's already listed from that lot. Some of it is organized in the orange Lionel box that you saw uh, me pick up. And um, yeah, so now both boxes are, are organized and we're all set to move forwards. All right, now some of you are probably uh, drooling over these blow molds because they are pretty cool. Uh, this is the frosty one for 15. Uh, the Santa one is priced at 20. Um, they're cool. The problem is the price. Um, now, they are Empire brand, which is a good brand, but this is about a $35 one. This one be about $25. doesn't have any lights or anything. So uh, I'm going to leave them here. Uh, probably be better I'll pick up for tomorrow, which would be discount day. So, you know, that's the thing. Come on the first day, prices are going to be higher. And it's uh, you know, trickier to find the deals, but, you know, that's what makes it fun. But, yeah, cool pieces. Be on the lookout for them. All right, so that's where we were, uh, really making out uh, with the items in here. And yes, I'm passing on the Cabbage Patch dolls. Uh, I have no interest in them. If they were in the box and they were in great shape and it was a special one, yes, but in general, I pass on the Cabbage Patch. Um, this, speaking of patches, um, this patch is pretty cool. It's the September 11th World Trade Center Fallen Heroes patch. I always tell people to look out for patches and for World Trade Center, so you would think this is a cool one to pick up. Problem is the price at ten dollars. Uh, it's about a fifteen dollar patch, so it's good for someone who's shopping here and wants it for a little bit of a discount. But um, for flipping it, I'm gonna pass on it. All right, so moving into this room I showed you earlier from the garage. Uh, behind the door are these really cool hand knit music boxes. Now this door is a little tough on the hinges to move, but we'll push it back a little bit. Uh, so there's four different ones. Uh, I like this one the best of all of them uh, for a couple reasons. One, a lot of people love toys. Number two, it has these little figures in them. And number three, of all of these, this is definitely the easiest one to ship and they're all priced the same. Uh, this one will be about an $18 one, uh, but this is one that I think would go for more. Uh, we gotta test it out to see if it works. So let's turn this little um, knob here and see if we could hear some music coming out of it. Here we go. It's a little low.
Yeah, it still works. I really like this. Uh, we're going to grab this one uh, for the three and we'll leave those for someone else, uh, even though I think they're cool. Again, this is my favorite one, so. All right, we'll pass on the modern M&M guy. These little butterflies, I'm gonna pass on them. They just feel pretty flimsy. Uh, let's go over here. We've got some little ceramics. You know, this is pretty cool. A lot of people love frogs and four bucks for all of the frogs on the first day. I love the guy with, I love the frog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's just hilarious there's something about derby hats that just make me laugh i don't know maybe when i'm older i need to get a derby hat i don't know <laughs> it's so cool yeah we're gonna grab all these that's a that's a great uh, great price let me scoop those up i always talk about um using the items that you have to protect things so what i did is i decided to put all the frog pieces uh, in the hat and just keep them up top to keep them safe. All right, so above where the frogs were, uh, we've got a couple more pieces. This is a 1979 Jasco. I'm gonna leave this here, something like this, probably about a $15 piece, but this one stands out much more to me um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, you don't normally see skunks uh, too much in these vintage planters and that's what this is. I like the sun, uh, multiple suns on it. I like that it has some um, gold tone to it as well. It doesn't look to be chipped up or broken. It does not have a maker's mark on it, but something like this, I've seen people ask like around $50 or a little bit more even for it. So for $5, this is definitely a good buy and we're going to add it to the box. All right, and the other ones we have here, um, this is pretty cool, a uh, nice vintage bunny. This would be for uh, holding succulents, so uh, about a $15 piece, so I'm going to leave it there for the five. Uh, same thing with this one here, maybe a little more uh, cub. This would go for probably like around 20, so I'm gonna leave it here for the five. But um, you know, I de definitely think it's a good deal for someone uh, coming by and you know, just shopping for themselves. So you know, go look for estate sales if you want some stuff for yourself too. Hey, look at that, we got a dog across the way checking me out. <laughs> hey, little buddy, what's your name? How are you? What's going on, little buddy? How are you, are you trying to tell me something? What are you trying to tell me? What? What? Oh, look over here. What do we got? Oh, he's got one of his dog friends over here. Check this out. I like to go for, you know, things related to dogs and pets, but you gotta look. Look at all that chipping and color loss. So that's a deal breaker for me, but you know, price is good, five bucks. Same thing here with the M&M guy. You know, $3, good price. Looks like it's a cookie. A jar, but um, yeah, look at all that fading on it. So pass on that. All right, now over here, there is this Pillsbury Doughboy cookie jar. <laughs> he actually does that. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know if he'd do that. But uh, yeah, you got to be uh, careful with these. Obviously, look for chipping. Um, this one, I don't see any chipping on. But another thing I'd be careful of is when it was made. Uh, there are modern ones and vintage ones. This one was made in 88, so I've seen this many times before. Uh, price on it's good. It's about a, you could get one like this for like 40 bucks uh, online. So just, you gotta remember that you've gotta carefully package this and uh, you know, ship this out, double box it in my opinion so it doesn't break. And you know, as cool as it is, it's just not worth it for me for the profit I would make. So gonna leave that one here. I think this cookie jar is haunted. Isn't he moving his head around a little bit or something? I don't know, he's kind of freaking me out. I feel like he's staring at me or something. But uh, if you're wondering, the Coca-Cola cups, these are plastic, not glass. So I'm gonna leave them behind. Uh, these blue birds here, this is also plastic. 
not metal as I had hoped for, but oh well. And yes, I did look through the records, three bucks a piece, but uh, not finding anything here that I like. It's mostly generic stuff that you see in most people's record collections. So we're going to pass on those. All right, moving out of there and uh, let's head down this basement and explore what we've got down here. All right, looks like uh, we got a lot to explore. Huh, this is funny. Look, we've got the water pitcher in the basin. Uh, reminds me of the prior estate sale, but I definitely think the one I got at the last sale was way better. Plus, look at this one. It's got this big crack coming down. But it's funny now I have an eye more for this stuff uh, compared to the compared to the past as I'm expanding the stuff I'm looking for. Okay, I am 100% picking this up. I can't even believe this. You do not see this one around much. This is the Fisher Price Clubhouse Sesame Street. I played with this all the time as a kid. Uh, let me know in the chat if you played with this as well. We've got the little uh, figures in here also. Oh, what we got in there? We got Big Bird. Uh, I see Bert peeking his head in there as well. Uh, and they're really cool, so I love them. They, they fit in here. You turn this thing around and you can see he spins. Uh, these are good money too, so I have one actually uh, at home that I picked up a long time ago at um, an actual uh, Fisher Price uh, headquarters uh, where they were selling one of these. I you know, was just trying to reclaim it from when I was a kid. Um, a lot of times these like little side barrels are missing, so it's good to see them here. Uh, same thing um, with some of these other accessories. They're often gone, like the slide, so that. The tire swing is almost always missing, so that's definitely good to see. And I'll show you something else cool. When you put the figure on here like this, like, like Big Bird, we're gonna turn this and watch what happens to it. It's gonna keep going. No, Grandpa, no! Don't make me go down the slide again. No, no! No. There you go, and uh, he's kind of big, so it takes him a little, uh, he needs a little guidance to come down there. Uh, but uh, Bert, for example, would uh, go down a little bit easier. So let's uh, let's put Bert up here and we'll, uh, we'll see the difference. Sorry, I can't resist playing with my childhood toys here uh, for all of you. So let's have him go down, there we go. He's going for now, now. That's the Bert voice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, see, he goes down a little bit better. So, all right. Sometimes I need a little extra push. Anyway, $20. Definitely grabbing this one. I can't even believe it. Oh, almost forgot to show you the back. I can't tell you how many times as a kid I stared at this back wall and just imagined that I was there. And you could put uh, one of the figures in here and he kind of disappears. And if you want to, like what I did as a kid was I like pushed him in like to pretend that he got like captured by someone. But if you want, you can keep him on there and sometimes he'll come out, but other times he'll kind of get stuck back there. So that's fun. And then uh, this part here, um, this is like a little like secret like chute that he could go down and put the characters in there and then they fly down into there. Of course, you got the steps. Sorry, I just can't stop talking about this. If you had this as a kid, let me know in the comments for sure. All right, now it pays to look below because Look what is in here. There are more figures that go with that set. So we got Ernie. In fact, we have two Ernies. We have, let's see what else we got here. We have Bert. We've got, <laughs> we've got Grover, my personal favorite. We've got the Count. By the way, these sell separately if you come across them, so definitely pick them up because people want them for their sets. We got another Big Bird, and big shout out to Stuart, who is probably watching this, or maybe I gotta let him know, but I always call him Franklin because he's from Franklin Hills uh, Ventures, but this is Roosevelt Franklin from Sesame Street. Oh, look at this. We also have Cookie Monster. C is for Cookie. Awesome, his eyes are faded off for the most part but and then two other accessory pieces as well like the mailbox and you know this little desk area but yeah i'm definitely going to pick all this up this is this is great 
All right, so here's another tip with the Sesame Street Clubhouse. I just can't get enough of this thing. It's so much fun. Um, you know, when you list the set like this, you've got to make a strategic decision what you're going to do with the figures because it is good to list some figures with the playset, but certain ones are more valuable than others. So um, ones here are fairly common, like Big Bird and Bert and Ernie. And you know, as I mentioned earlier, you see with Cookie Monster, his eyes have been rubbed off a bit. So, you know, this would be a good one to just, you know, throw in here in the lot. You kind of sneak it in there since um, there's so many other good things about the set that's not going to really bother someone. But if you tried to sell that individually, that would be more of a problem. But take a look over here. So the count, he's, you know, about a $20 figure as long as he's in good shape. But the one I want to point out the most is actually Grover because Grover is notorious for his face completely rubbing off because it's painted on. So a lot of times when you find him, he just barely has any paint on or sometimes it's completely off. If he had barely has the paint on there, you know, you get like 10 bucks out of him. But when he looks like this, it's difficult to find him like this. So he could go for like 40 to 50 bucks pretty easily when he looks like this. So when I list this, He's going to be sold separate, Count's going to be sold separate, and these are going to go together. And that's just a strategic way to maximize your profit off of you know, something like this when you pick it up. All right, so this here is Mr. Hooper's store, also from Fisher Price. You can see some of the label is taken off. This does collapse, so it goes um, into one solid piece. It's expanded out right now. Uh, I don't see the Mr. Hooper uh, figure. I did not have this one when I was a year. This one's definitely way more beat up than the other one. Um, you know, retail on this would be about 40 bucks plus the shipping. So you know, maybe you get like 60 bucks out of it. So it's, and that would be in a little bit better shape than this. So I'm gonna pass on this. All right, now this pick over here is gonna be Jessie Shops inspired because whenever I think of her, I think of big, bold butterflies. And that's what this is. Wait till you see this, check this out. Look at this. It actually is called Butterfly Bold, Bottles Beautiful by Cesar in 1971, made in Italy, hand painted. This thing is incredible. It also has the stopper in it and it has the tax stamp on top, plus it has the antenna. I mean, this thing is amazing. Look at this. Wow. For $10, it also has the stamp on the front. There was Kentucky bourbon that went into this, which is perfect. What a great drink to go into here. I can't even believe this pick. Um, as excited as I was about the Sesame Street Clubhouse, um, this is just also really amazing. So well, we're gonna we're gonna add this one in here as well. This one's for you, Jesse Shops. So we've got this big box of posters here and what is inside is, let me show you, I'm going to open this up and we've got, watch those hands, we've got ladies of the 80s folks. We've got a bunch of them. Uh, this whole box is filled with them. I'll try to show you some more of what we got here. All right, I'm gonna use this bell to hold them in place. It's the best I could do. But we've got the iconic Daisy Dukes right here. Look at that, we got the Daisy there. Catherine Bach, oh my gosh, incredible. So <laughs> that alone is gonna be worth what we got in the box there. Careful there. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Here's the full view on this one if you were wondering.
a young and gorgeous Lonnie Anderson with a pink background. Are you kidding me? Okay, folks, get ready for this. You are not going to believe this. I can't believe this is in here. Here we go, check this out. Look at this original Wonder Woman. I've never even seen this poster. Oh my gosh, look at Linda Carter on this. Oh my God, the pink, the stars, the red boots. Oh my gosh, this is insane. All right, what do we got next? The one and only Susan Anton. Wow, I'm telling you, I told you, it's the primetime curse. The ladies follow me at every sale that I go to. <laughs> what do we got here? Do we got any football fans? Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders, pure vintage goodness. Are you kidding me? We got next the one and only Cheryl Teagues. There we go, folks. All right, who do we have here? Kind of looks like Marie Osmond, but I don't think it is. Let's see here, Julie. Mm, hello, Julie. I'm prime time. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> All right, this is the biggest poster so far. Now, hopefully there's not any nudity in it so I could actually sell it, but let's see. We've got a 1981 calendar. This is really, this is amazing. There are so many, look at this. Wow, oh my gosh. All right, good, no nudity on it either. So yeah, this is, this is neat. Mm -hmm. Vintage 80s, ladies from the 80s. All right, now I like joking and saying ladies from the 80s, but uh, some of these are uh, from the 70s. So here we've got Miss Carter, and um, she's looking nice in this outfit. So, wow, 70s and 80s ladies, this is, this is great. It's like a gold mine of, of posters here. Can't believe they've been sitting down here this whole time, wow. All right, this one has a rip on top, so it's gonna need a little repair work. I could even do some of that, but um, this is uh, from TAP, which as you'll see uh, over here, this is an air cargo company. So this is probably the oldest of the posters here. A couple more so this is our Farrah Fawcett one pretty nice got a little red white and blue in the background too all right this one's a poster for Ravel's Bolero which actually has Dudley Moore on it and Bo Derek so definitely cool a few holes in it but I don't think anyone's gonna really care too much about that uh, for something like this. All right, and here's our last one. This one looks like a vintage poster, but it's made of like a thinner paper than these other ones here. So this is a total, let me count up how many we have all together. All right, we got a total of 14 posters, so I'm gonna move these upstairs as well. Yeah, I saw this one coming back down the stairs from grabbing the posters, because I have this as well. You put the uh, Fisher-Price figures in there, like the Sesame Street ones, or other ones, the little people, when they ride around in the car. So, yeah, it makes sense to add this to our a pile here. 
All right, so we have two Christmas items here. This is definitely something to look out for. It's the ceramic uh, Christmas trees. This is a white and red one. Um, it is missing uh, a light here. That's not a huge deal. Um, the issue I have right now for first day is the price of 40. I'd love to get it. Like if I came second day and this was here for 20, I'd grab it in two seconds. Um, because this one would sell for like 80, 90 dollars. Um, that does include the shipping. It's a little uh, bit of a pain to ship this because of the shape of it. And so um, this one is a little bit more appealing to me. Uh, this is from Yankee Candle. It does have the candles in it. Christmas is coming up. I think it's really cool. Uh, you've got the birds on it and stuff and nothing's broken off of it. Um, and the price on it is 10 bucks. Now I could probably sell this for between 50 and 60. It's way easier to ship than this piece. So that's why I'm gonna go after this one, but definitely be on the lookout. Uh, for these ceramic uh, trees and test them to make sure they're working. All right, so I was putting the uh, posters where they should go and I came across uh, this vintage tree house. This is from General Mills Kenner, 1975. Uh, if you see it, you poke down on it and then you never know what you might find in here. This is Mr. Hooper and He's supposed to go, let's get that down there, snag, there you go. He's supposed to go in the Mr. Hooper's Playhouse, so we're gonna put him down there so someone who buys the Playhouse could get Mr. Hooper. So, we go Mr. Hooper, we'll bring you back to your rightful place. That tree house, that'll go for like 25 bucks, so that's why I'm passing on it, big and bulky. Here we go. All right. I'm putting Mr. Hooper where he belongs. He, he belongs in Mr. Hooper's yes. <laughs> playhouse there. So whoever wants to buy him could get Mr. Hooper. There you go. There you go, Mr. Hooper. Well, by the way, if you're wondering, um, you know, there's always exceptions, but in general, uh, when I come across the vintage, like Fisher Price sets that are more general, like this one's about Main Street, this one's just, you know, push a couple buttons. That one's an airport. Um, those I tend to pass up on. They're not usually worth as much as, you know, something that's tied into a specific series like this one. And also potentially the Mr. Hooper one, um, depending on the price that you could get it for. Now the Big Bird's ABC learning machine, that's a much smaller piece, so it's not something like a big set, and this is not something that really goes for that much. All right, so here's the workbench area where the guy did all his handyman stuff, and um, taking a look around here. This guy loved Buick stuff, for sure. Look at this. Oh man, I was thinking again this. It looks like it's just original art. I don't know if he did it or someone else. It does have a water stain on top. It's just done on a piece of paper. I mean, gosh, let me know in the comments if you think I should pick that up or not. I mean, I'm definitely gonna get the sealed media. I always tell you about that. It's pretty cheap and you bulk it up and you can do really well with it. So, Oh man, what do you think? It's pretty cool. If I'm going back and forth with it like this, the thing is this stain is kind of annoying me. So I don't know much of a deal breaker. And in fact, there's two because there's one up here also. I don't know, what are you yelling at me? You yelling at me to get it, get it for five bucks. Hmm, well wait a minute, what's that say? Uh, I can't really make that out. Okay, but either way, I think, eh, why not, right? I think I'll go for it for the five bucks. There's got to be enough car fans out there that like it. And I'll be looking forward to the comments on this one. All right, this has been a great time so far. <laughs> we really... Um, just dug up a lot of treasure in just a few rooms. Now we're gonna head back up the stairs, past the garage and uh, inside the house again. You know, we've dabbled in there, but now I'm gonna take a deeper look. There's a few rooms. I think the bulk of the stuff was in the garage, in that side room to the garage and in the basement, but we'll, we'll check out and see if there's more stuff up there. 
Oh, and before we head upstairs, uh, there is this room over here. Oh my gosh, look at this old solid metal. My gosh, look at these old skis too. Wow, look at that. Just $10 for the pair of skis, wood skis. Um, man, that's a little too big for me to ship right now. <laughs> But uh, definitely be cool. Like if I had like a brick and mortar, like a shop or something, I definitely would pick those up for the 10. That's definitely cool. Um, there's some games here. Nothing that really stands out too much. A um, few things over here, but it's mostly odds and ends and stuff. Got an army jacket. Um, yeah. All right. I think we'll head upstairs. All right, we're in the kitchen now, and I have to respond to this because something someone said in a prior video. You missed the corningware, you missed the corningware. I didn't miss the corningware, okay? I come across corningware all the time, um, especially this. Uh, I know it very well, actually, because my mom used to make tuna casserole in this all the time when I was a kid. But you just see it so much, and a lot of times, if you take a deeper dive into it, it's pretty scratched up and stuff. So, um, you know, for, especially for these more common pieces, I... I usually pass them out. All right, now another thing I want to mention, uh, someone had put a comment in a prior video about looking for bunt pans because the vintage ones distribute the heat uh, much better than the modern ones and people will uh, pay up for them. But in terms of you know research I've done into it, it's really the cast iron ones that people will pay you know, over a hundred dollars for um, people pay um, also less than that for ones that have some markings on it. You can see this doesn't have any marking on it or anything. So if it's just like a basic one like this, you have to factor in the bulk of it, you know, into the shipping that you're going to have to add to it. So yeah, maybe like you, know, you get like 20, 25, something like that. But you know, these are low price, two bucks a piece, but yeah, I'm going to pass on it unless I see some markings on it or if it's cast iron. All right, so that was the kitchen area. And then we're inside here. We have this lamp here, but uh, you could tell it's a modern lamp made in China. So we're going to pass on that. And some old clothes in here, but nothing that stands out to me. Uh, we've got a couple more hats in here. They really spread them out. Uh, this is about like an $18 hat, the, uh, the Delco Freedom Battery one. And this is really nothing to speak of. But, um, you know, for this, yeah, I really like to be at least 20 bucks that I could get out of the hat. So for that reason, I'm going to uh, pass on it. But, um, yeah, not, not too much stuff in this room. So let's move on to the next one. Oh, and I do want to mention they have linens here. Uh, we've been talking about linens here on the channel. Uh, it's something I'm trying to brush up on more and I pick up here and there. Um, but nothing here really jumps out to me in terms of the style. Um, that's you know something I'm looking at more, like the patterns on these uh, linens. But again, these seem fairly generic to me. Let me know if there's something you saw that you would have grabbed or if you would have passed on them as well. All right, so this was the next room over. As you could see, there's some more hats here. A lot of them are Coca-Cola and racing ones. Uh, this person was definitely a NASCAR fan. Um, gosh, you know, for the most part, I stay away from NASCAR stuff unless it's something really rare and unusual and vintage. Um, but, you know, none of these hats are really doing it for me. So uh, they're just so commonplace, so I'm going to leave them here and on the table we just have some basic computer equipment and stuff electronics but uh, nothing I'm real interested in so we're gonna head out this way and go to the last room all right yeah turns out that I was right that uh, the bulk of the good stuff was in the garage and in the basement and in the room next to the garage so not too much to speak of in here a lot of old clothes that i looked through 
These are vintage games, but they're fairly common. I see them in a lot of the state sales, so I'm gonna pass on them. They're also big and bulky and 10 bucks each. All right, and before I head out that door, um, I did see this box of purses for three bucks each, so decided to look through it before I left, and I did think that this was cool. I like things that are regional, so this is a nice regional tote. It's an excellent shape. You've got lots of cool names on it, the shape of the state. You've got the basketball on it. North Carolina, of course, famous for their basketball, especially the Tar Heels, home of Michael Jordan. And um, it's double-sided too. So yeah, for three bucks, I'll definitely pick this up. It'll be someone with North Carolina roots who's interested in this one. This is the checkout room, but this is the last item I just want to show you because I had this when I was a kid, the Fisher Price medical kit, uh, so the tool kit. Uh, let me know in the comments if you had one as well, but check it out. It's complete. I remember playing with this all the time, pretending I heard a heartbeat, pretending you're injecting stuff, um, drawing blood. Definitely cool, pretending you could, you know, actually use these things to test reflexes. How many blood pressures I checked when I was a kid. These things are real important for, for kids. So, um, you know, these vintage toys are really neat. Um, this would go for about 20 bucks online complete. Um, sometimes people will buy it and just sell the pieces or parts. Um, I'm gonna let someone else grab it. It's five bucks, but I got enough stuff today, so we'll leave this for someone else. But good memories to end the day. All right, folks, here we go. Look at this. We loaded up, and guess what? The price on the posters was such an amazing deal. 40 bucks for all the posters. So that's like $2.85 a poster. So wow, um, I'm very excited about this. Uh, great deal. Uh, the total price, as you could see, came to $228. So uh, I'm gonna have a lot of fun going through uh, the trains and everything and getting all that listed, cleaning up the hats and stuff. I mean, there's some work to be done, but um, overall, you know, I had a blast today and I hope you did as well. All right, everyone, we're going to head back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters. We'll check in and see what Daisy's doing. I hope that you like the many different types of items that you saw me source today. It just shows you the potential that's out there when you are able to source so many different types of things. So expanding the categories that you source in and the niches is really, really important. So, uh, and it's something that uh, is just, you know, just taking a long time to learn and I'm still learning. So, um, you know, always remember that the learning never stops in reselling. And I've learned a lot from you, from people commenting, uh, people writing things and the premieres and stuff like that. So uh, I, I appreciate it. And um, also as many great YouTube channels as well, where I've learned a lot of things uh, also. So uh, hopefully you picked up a few good nuggets here. Let me know what your favorite item was uh, in the comment section. And now let's go back and see what Daisy's up to. All right, so I have a big treat for all you Daisy fans. I just got back from the state sale. Mrs. Primetime called me and she told me that Daisy's two brothers are over. Yes, her two brothers. So originally we got Daisy from a breeder and our contractor used the same breeder to also get two Shih Tzus because he loved Daisy so much. And so they're over visiting right now. So we got to go and see Daisy and her brothers uh, playing together. Gosh, hey Daisy. <laughs> hey Max. Hey Bachi. <laughs> oh gosh, this is funny. There we go. Oh gosh, there we go. There you go, you guys are funny. <laughs> Daisy, they're chasing you around. Daisy doesn't know what to do. They're your brothers, so they're a little more rambunctious than you are. Here we go. <laughs> oh gosh. They cracked me up. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Bachi, a little different. <laughs> They're all the same dads though, so yeah. they've got those, they've got the same genes. There we go. <laughs> oh gosh, Daisy, you're so funny, you're so shy. Look at you hiding. 